I'm trying to figure out how to- And we are back! <laughs> Chapter 2, Into the Darkness. Okay, so now you can flirt. That's the thing you can do now. Hang on, let me full screen this. I need to, I need to, I need to see it all. You're not full screening? Okay. okay. Hello, welcome back to our playthrough of When the Night Comes by Lunaris Games. And we've unlocked flirt. Wait, I didn't read that! Okay. We have unlocked flirting. I'm gonna go to history for you. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's not, I guess Darn we can it. see. But I can flirt but... now. Yeah, so okay. we've unlocked flirt options. So what you need to know about flirt options is really it just gives you a chance to, well, I guess flirt, flirt with the characters. Yeah. It doesn't affect who you pick because at the end of the day you get to pick outright who you're going to date. Okay, so it's so just So you like can like fun. flirt with everyone with no worries. Okay. I'm still going to do what feels natural to me, which isn't always uh, the flirtiest option. I can see we're about to Valid. talk to Gus yeah. over here. But yeah, so you are at work. Mm-hmm. I make it to the enforcement okay. headquarters with time to spare after August thinly veiled the red about tardiness yesterday. Wasn't that today? I, I don't know. I don't care. Uh, I think I think they switched the days. It's chapter two, so it's a new day. Okay. After a terrible night's sleep on scratchy sheets, I couldn't possibly feel less ready to face my less than friendly supervisor. How do I make this cold exterior melt? I raise my fist to knock the door, but the muffled conversation that I hear coming from inside has me hesitating. God, if they open the door to me eavesdropping i would die it sounds heated and i glance at the clock on the wall behind me to check the time i have one minute before i'm sure general willenheim will admonish me for being late so i take a deep breath and i knock the voices stop suddenly i hear a clack of heels and then i love that they wear heels yes okay i need to know that they're six feet tall and then they also wear heels <gasps> enjoy <sighs> hang on <laughs> i have to put that together in my mind Tall. Okay. Oh, it's you. Yeah, who the fuck else was it gonna be, Gus? The quickly glance at the clock, <laughs> brushing us. Who the fuck were you expecting, Gus? You I mean, told me to be saying here. that, like, in character, like, in the world itself. You think everything I'm saying, I'm saying aloud? Yes. Yeah, I am. I'm very mean. Like, honestly, he'd probably, like, they would probably, like, blast you across the room, but. That's fine. They quickly glance at the clock, brushing a stray mob behind it. their ear. Well, you're on time, at least. Congratulations. I could pop you right now. I know it's terribly cozy out there, but please come in. Okay. I nod politely and quickly step into the enforcer's office. Cool office, dude. Very marble. It's beautifully decorated, neatly arranged bookcases lining the walls, laden with a collection of trinkets and tomes that possibly rival Ezra's. But probably don't. I love your pyramid. That's a good pyramid right there. I never noticed the pyramid. I love your pyramid. Robin didn't notice it, but I did. <laughs> There's a huge desk in the middle that's positively overflowing with reports and letters. A half-empty ink pot and elegant sapphire coil poised at the ready. Then, as if I'm experiencing a rather vivid case of deja vu. Hey. Oh. Piper appears before it's what It's our wife. It's wife. Looking decidedly less impressed than she did in the tavern the other day. Hunter Robin. <laughs> I'm gonna laugh every time. Nice to see you again. I love you. Sorry I was mean to you the other day. Hello, Piper. It's nice to see you. <laughs> she stares at me. Eyes Sorry I was mean to you, but you're my wife now, so it's fine. <laughs> it's nice to meet you, my wife. Hello. She stares at me, eyes narrowed as the gaze flickers to August, who stands quietly just behind me. Their hands are clasped behind their back, a dark eyebrow quirked almost expectantly. Am I supposed to do something here? Piper frowns at them, nose crinkling before she turns her attention back to me. Yes, you too. Oh, he was waiting on her to be nice to me. I offer her a smile, but the one she offers in return doesn't quite meet her eyes. That's okay. I appreciate the effort nonetheless. Yeah, you can be sad sometimes. It's okay. So you two have met already, hmm? In the tavern again, Piper. Shoot, I'm sorry. I, didn't... I like how they just know that. I didn't mean to, like, rat you out. August sighs heavily when we both fail to respond, and Piper manages to... I like that you're like, okay, I know I did this, but I'm not gonna, like, dig her any further into the... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Into the hole. It was an accident. Piper manages to look anywhere but her superior. Anyway. They run their hand along the edge of their desk, expecting inspecting the perfectly dust-free fingertip as Piper huffs in their general direction. Okay. I know you have very important business to attend to, but I'm not finished with you yet, Willenheim. Is that so? 
I've given you your mission. You've complained about it. Click, please. Thank you. Loudly. So pray tell, Major, what else could there possibly be? God, you're a bitch. Anyway, Piper flinches and I said They are. Her demeanor <laughs> shift. I s God. Click. Piper flinches and I see her demeanor shift, her admirable determination withering and dying as that word rolls off August's tongue. A harsh reminder of her demotion, one that clearly stings. Oof. I wonder if I'll ever get the chance to ask her about it, to finally know exactly what she did that warranted her being made such an example of. Nice, August. Really nice. You could quite literally cut the tension in here with a dull-bladed dagger. It's not awkward at all. No, it's chill. It's just, it, it's just like that. We, uh, we, uh meeting general, uh, please change general. the vibes in here. General, general, please, the vibes. General, please, the vibes. General, please, the vibes. <laughs> August sighs, glancing at Piper almost guiltily, but the sorry expression fades the second she meets their gaze. Okay. Yes, we do. Don't be rude. Is that everything for today, Merriman? She growls a quiet rumble through clenched teeth. Is it it? I wasn't asking. <laughs> they take a deep breath, pinching the bridge of their nose between forefinger and thumb, utterly exasperated. <clears throat> You're dismissed for today, Merriman. They stare each other down, and I wonder how the hell they ever managed to become one of the most successful in the nation teams in all of Eskria. Yeah, I wonder that too. I also wonder why they're allowed to just wear their sash however and wherever they want. I've heard- So, um, my understanding is that if you're a hunter, you can wear your purple sash however. If you're an enforcer, there's a specific uniform that you're supposed to wear. August is not August wearing it. August doesn't wear. Okay. Because she's yeah, wearing August it kind of like care. a fun belt. Hmm? She's wearing it kind of like a fun belt. She's like, I don't want any weird tan lines. And then he's like- Or there. Hey, sorry, yeah, they, they look dope over there. Anyway. I've heard countless weird and wonderful stories of their partnership, of Piper's unparalleled strength and August's unmatched intelligence. But here, now, all I see is a dispirited hunter and an impossibly tired enforcer. Harry is on his way, I suggest you depart quickly. She blanches at that, and I can almost see her admitting defeat, her shoulders relaxing, the fur of her brow fading. Fine, I'll go and look, in, look for your possibly a small chimera, but possibly a big fucking cat. <laughs> what an awful mission that they've given her one day you'll have to stop uh, there's a me. once we finish this the whole game there's a mini story and it's literally called possibly a chimera probably a big fucking cat and it's about like a mission in which people think it's probably a chimera but it's probably a big fucking cat piper grabs a set of expensive looking daggers from the chair in front of their desk strapping them to her back with haste she pauses in front of me, and those dark eyes soften as she meets my gaze. Yeah, you and I got each other's backs. See you around, Hunter. Enjoy your imp important meeting, and remember what I said. I can't remember what you said. God, I hope she, like, backs out of the room while flipping them off. Yeah. Another glance at August, and they suddenly become very interested in studying their perfectly manicured nails. Okay. Foot. Ours. Oh, yeah, that's what she said. I remember now. With a wink, she spins to face August. She squares up to them playfully. The enforcer tearing above her, still uncaring, unbothered. Twat. <laughs> Bye. And with that, she turns on her heel and slams the door so hard it shakes in its frame. August. And you know what? She's an icon and we stand. Yes. August walks around the back of their desk, practically falling into the well-used leather chair. Yeah! Yeah! I scan the piles upon piles of paperwork that litter the wood, taking in the countless reports and letters, scribbling diagrams and gruesome drawings. I also take in all that hair. Gorgeous hair. Beautiful hair. I get the impression August is in over their head. The disorder of all this- They also have some of those ear piercings that you love so yeah! much. Yeah! Of all this information making my fingers twitch. Every thing is, if everybody has three ear piercings, does anybody have three ear piercings? Uh, Think only the that. characters that you get to date. That's okay. That's how we'll tell Just them the people apart. we care about. They watch me carefully, stifling a yawn with a trembling hand. I know. Trust me. I know. Oh, we read each other's minds now. Okay. As much as I hate to admit it, we've got nothing. As of right now, I suspect everyone in this town, as should you. Okay. My number one suspect is you. 
though I may not really know them just yet. I sense that this kind of vulnerability I'm seeing is rare. Oh, is that vulnerability? I thought that was... Okay, sorry. I just don't know how to read people, I guess. Is it vulnerability or bitching? To be fair, though, you're reading it not, like, seeing, them. seeing an actual yeah. person. I'm still obsessed with their long, sexy fingers. <laughs> Look at that pinky <laughs> finger. That's a long, that was as long as my pointer finger. <laughs> August doesn't strike me as the type to admit defeat so easily. And something more serious than the usual stress of the job seems to be lingering under the surface. After what I saw back in Ezra's shop, I can't help but wonder what they were like before all of this. The way the young witch looked at them. Pity. Ezra pitied August. Oh. Another heavy sigh. A noise I suspect I'll be hearing often. And August huffs a quiet laugh. They relax back in their chair, and for the first time since we met, they seem to let their guard down. I don't know why Harry decided you were the right person for this job above all others, but I trust him implicitly. So, whatever plan he has for you, we better make it work. Okay. They pause, staring me down with those ice blue eyes. Now are you ready to begin? Yeah! Oh, I get to actually... Yes, you get to you get to pick. So you can do I think I am, yes, let's start, or you can flirt. How is this flirty? <laughs> they will make it flirty Whatever. and you get to see what it means. You stopped reading. Oh, sorry. Uh, his twisting in the gut. Hang on. <laughs> I was like in the zone. I feel emboldened as that piercing gaze bores into me, something twisting in my gut. I like how you just got so invested that you I stopped was like, reading. like, like, I, I, you can't see me right now, but I'm like eyes wide, jaw slacked, like I'm in the zone. I lean forward <laughs> in my chair to make sure they see Auto-zone? me. Really see me. I can't wait to see where our partnership takes us, General Willenheim. <sighs> August presses their fingers to their lips, appraising me. Oh, really? Oh, shit. <laughs> well, together I think we can do absolutely anything if we truly wanted to. Calm down. <laughs> Though they're clearly trying to hide it, to stifle it. I see their lips twist into a sly grin. Ooh. And you say this after knowing me for a mere day and a half? Listen, you're six foot something and you're wearing heels. I know everything I need to know. <laughs> How bold. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. You're cracking me up. I know what I'm capable of, and you're quite prolif prolific. You're quite prolific, you know? Long, dark eyelashes kiss the tops of lightly flushed cheeks. Yes, made them flush. Dusky rose painting pale skin as they lean in. Oh, we leaning now. We leaning? Closer. Closer. Close enough for me to see the flecks of violet that swirl on the outer edge of impossibly blue irises. I get it. They have eyes. <laughs> I get it. They have blue eyes. <laughs> August is magic, overflowing with it. It pours out of them in waves, and I can feel it deep in my bones, settling on my skin. That's two different body parts, but okay. But call it a gut feeling. A quiet, careful laugh, and suddenly they don't look quite so tired anymore. I suppose you hunters hold quite the advantage on me with your gut feelings, don't you? August tilts their head, their face doing something strange, an expression too quick to catch before it settles back into that implacable ease, implac yeah, whatever, ease they've mastered so wonderfully. They curl the corner of a page that settles beneath their fingertips where their hands have drawn closer to me to the edge of the desk. Okay, that was easy. Um. They clear their throat, but their next words sound noticeably husky. Yes! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Regardless, I do hope you're right, Hunter Robin. <laughs> I hate that you they did pause. this. I hate this. I <laughs> I didn't know it would come up so often. I know you didn't know, and I did know, and I didn't stop you, you didn't and that's stop what me. the problem is. They pause. Rather, I look forward to testing your theory. Okay. I smile, genuine and warm. Me too. And please, call me Sarah. We're going to be partners after Thank all, you. aren't we? Very well, but you will still call me General. I laugh, but I nod my agreement. Fair enough. Why, of course, General. Bye! I hear footsteps in the hallway, and August quickly rises to their feet. They straighten their clothing, tie their sash a little tighter, smooth down their hair. When, um... Piper told us, like, hey, if any of these guys give you crap, I'll put my boot in their arse. I don't think she knew we were going to be the ones uh, just walking into people's offices and flirting with them unabashedly. 
I think we kind of need a boot to the arse. I don't know. They straighten their clothing. I, like, the thing is, no one, I think, ever calls you out on that shit. No. I'm, like, I'm just really funny, workplace, actually. like, violations. Like, I can't, like... Well, to be fair, they're your superior. If they, like, they would have more clout with HR than you would. Yeah, so I think it's fine. We gotta get HR in here. <laughs> we need to get fantasy HR We need fantasy involved HR. We need, because you're flirting with your boss. We need FHR in here to tell me to stop. FHR. We need FHR. Where is, where is the Lunaris headquarters? We need the FHR. Uh, FHR. Okay, what if they made a spin-off game about FHR? About the fantasy HR. Just like, I would I would die. That would be so okay, a Dungeons good. and Dragons campaign, would, but it's about fantasy HR. Like everyone that. works so, in fantasy okay, HR. Okay, we need to do that. We need to do that. We need to make a D&D. Well, I have worked in HR, which makes it even That's, funnier because I can do a pretty realistic. Yeah. Fantasy HR. It's like Dave in accountings keeps flirting with Marge in Dragon Slaying, and she she can't have it anymore. If this goes on, she's gonna hit him with her axe. That sort of thing. Yeah, fantasy bureaucracy is maybe the funniest thing. That in is the, the funniest thing I've ever heard in my life. Okay, anyway, they straighten their clothing, tie their sash a little tighter, smooth down their hair. I follow their lead and move to stand by their side. My heart hammering triple time in my chest as those footsteps draw near. There's a distinct clang of metal, of armor, and heavy boots. Then the door swings open, and an imposing figure enters the room. Nice. That scar looks identical to the one on the cat boy. His gaze flickers between myself and August. Expression- Excuse me, expression- um, I also think that that jacket that this guy's wearing is the uniform jacket. That uh, August should be wearing. That August is not wearing. August is like, uh-uh, casual Friday every day, baby. Woo! Casual Friday Got my nightshirt on. This is a good jacket. Why wouldn't you want to wear this jacket? I think it's because it's gold. And, and, and they just don't uh, like it. just doesn't... It clashes, clashes with, with the hair. With their hair. Anyway. And they're picky. And they're very vain. They are very vain. <laughs> His gaze flickers between myself and August, expression stern, emotionless. I risk a glance at August out of the corner of my eye, and they're unmoving, stuck to the spot. I've heard many tales about Harold Addington III, and he stands before me. And as he stands before me, I feel a certain sense of pride that he would choose to summon me to deal with such a vital case. His name is Harold Addington III. Uh, yeah. You, and? Uh, August was calling them Harry earlier. Are they, like, on first-name basis? With I believe that they are on a first-name basis. He's adorned in the standard enforcer colors of black and gold, but his outfit is far more regal than any of the other Yeah, straight up, August was like, um, seen. you can, I'll work for you, and I'll be your best enforcer, but I'm not wearing black and gold because they clash with everything about me. To be fair, this outfit is far more regal than any of the other high-ranking officials I've seen. So maybe it's a little bit less... Gold. I think it's a little less ostentatious, but it's still black and gold. I love this. And August is like, I'm not messing with that. Gauntlet. My colors are silver and blue, and that's it. Purple. Uh, oh! Harry peels off the steel gauntlet that covers his right hand, setting it upon August's desk. His elaborate coat is discarded next, and he stands toe-to-toe -to -toe with August. That's very close. <laughs> a wide smile breaks out across his starred lips, and he pulls August into a tight embrace, a deep, comforting chuckle rumbling in his chest. Okay, they are on a first name thing. Old friend, how the heck are you? It's been a while, has it not? Look at my bolo tie, isn't that good? He pulls away. <laughs> Look at my bolo tie, you can tell I'm the boss because I wear the bolo, the bolo tie. tie he pulls away, still firmly holding on to August's shoulders. You look exhausted, have you not been sleeping? Yeah, no, they haven't. August offers him a wry smile as Harry drops his hands. I'm trying to sleep, does that count? Harry throws them a look, something stern but edged with a certain fondness. One that a father might give to their child. Aw. Look after yourself, Augustus. August nods once, still smiling as Harry turns to stand before me. Okay. Hunter Robin, it's such a pleasure to meet you. I can finally put a face to all those... I hate those that you did this to me. I, know that I hate that you did this to me. A pleasure to meet you. I can finally put a face to all those impressive reports I've heard. I've read. Hop... <laughs> Yeah. What if I just said stop sharing? <laughs> You're like, actually, we're done with this. <laughs> we're done. End of the end of the line. He offers me his hand, and I eagerly take it. It's not clicking. There we go. It's a pleasure to meet you too, Lieutenant General Addington, sir. Okay. We take out the third. We don't care we're enough like, about no, the third. You, you, we'll just put a sir on the end. That's fine. He smiles warmly, keeping his grip on grip on my hand, his other holding my forearm. Harry is fine. None of that formal nonsense. If we're going to be working together for the foreseeable future, we might as well get familiar, wouldn't you agree? I would agree. I was just telling Gus over here. 
<laughs> of course, uh... You get, like, smacked <laughs> on your very first day of work. He laughs, and I feel incredibly relaxed in his presence. And then Harry's like, hey, you can't hit. You can't do a hit. And Gus is like, no, it's fine. Like, they were harassing me earlier, so yeah. I was this about is, to report them to Fantasy HR. This now we're even. This is tit Sarah, Sarah Robin came up in here and was, like, sexual harassing me. So now I get to smack them. It's fine. Um, I think Harry's the murderer. He laughs, and I feel incredibly relaxed in his presence. Now let's get to business, shall we? What? I think he's the murderer. I don't know what to tell you. August stands, hands him a standard issue file that's sealed with wax, bearing the Scarlet Enforcer emblem. Harry's married. They watch me carefully as Harry breaks the seal, a heavy sigh falling from his lips as he quickly scans the report. I also love that the gray is confined to right here. It's very, like, hot older man. (laughs) <laughs> um, breaks the seal, falling from his lips, and scans the report. He closes his eyes, handing the papers back to August before he turns his back to us both. A smile, a smile, a silent moment passes, and Harry rounds his shoulders, clicking his neck before he faces us. You know, Sarah, I've worked for the Enforcers for nearly 30 years, and I've never felt quite so useless. Oh, that's okay. Harry pauses, the waver in his voice evident as he composes himself. We've lost some of our best, our brightest, kindest. I am sad. I truly am at a loss, and I'm finding it hard to remove my emotions from the equation when it's my own people being needlessly slaughtered. August averts their gaze, stealing a quick glance at me, seemingly sussing my reaction, but also giving Harry a moment of privacy. Nothing can bring them back, but we can bring those responsible to justice. Suddenly it hits me. The victims were hunters, weren't they? Yes, they were hunters, just like you. Good! I love that for me. Harry huffs a quiet laugh, clearing his throat. I know we're putting a great deal of responsibility on your shoulders, but I have never-ending faith that you're the one who can help with this madness. And this madness. Now, do you have any questions? Do I? Let's see. Um, ask about the victims. Are there any patterns? Ask well, you'll have to ask both. Oh, okay. I was, like, gonna really... But if I have to ask both, I'll just pick one. How many do we have so far? August looks to Harry for guidance, and Harry nods his permission. Yeah, I'd certainly hope you'd give him permission to tell me about the case when I'm the one working it. Four, but we anticipate more. A victim has shown up every seven days for the past month. Okay. Yeah, so the most recent being six days ago, which is when I called for you. Good. That's so tomorrow. <laughs> enough is enough. So we're due for a body if our calculations are correct. That sucks. Okay. Harry clears his throat, twists the gold band on his finger. I don't mean to spoil it for you, but you die tomorrow. Cool. Concentrate on the latest victim for now. Male, 46 years of age, a general. One of our best. We owe him this. I take a deep breath before I ask my next question, feeling immensely guilty before it even falls from my lips. Were all of them burned? I I saw the ash, the charred ground. Each body has been burned very badly, yes, to the point where we cannot determine what wounds they inflicted beforehand. Darn. Not even with magic? Click, please. Thank you. He shakes his head, exchanging a look with August, one I can't quite place. Not even with magic. Wow. Other than the timing of the murders, are there any other patterns I should be aware of? Harry's mouth twists into a grimace and he shakes his head. I I hope you don't think ill of me, but I'd rather not tell you at this point. How do I investigate without knowing the things? He and August share a look and August seems perplexed by the statement. Yeah, right? It's perplexing. Harry. Harry places his hand upon August's shoulder, a reassuring touch, a smile. Then he's looking back at me. Please, just trust me, both of you. I don't trust you for shit. I want you to go out there. <laughs> I don't know you, bud. I don't know and you see like that. Things with their with your own eyes. Utilize your abilities. Then we can discuss what you what we've already discovered. I don't want to go out there and see things with my own eyes. There's a murderer out there. This is this is your job, Sarah. I am a hunter. That's who the victims are. The next murder should happen tomorrow. And he's like, go out there, get in the field, bro. This is a complex case with many intricacies, but I think it's important that initially you don't let our opinions cloud your judgment. Okay, Ben. As terrifying and as baffling as this may seem, I see where Harry's coming from. No, I don't. 
I don't want to be influenced by an investigation that's so obviously failing. Okay, yeah, that's kind of a good point. But only kind of. So where would you like me to start? I almost expect them to tell me to figure it out myself, but Harry surprises me. Well, the most obvious place would be the Ibeck. Abeck? Yep. Ibeck. Ibeck. I think it's Ibeck. The what? Yeah. <laughs> what that's the fuck is an Ibeck? I was a curious pair are the Woodridge twins. Okay. Interesting grammar there. They've taken up residence in the old church in the middle of town. I'm sure you've seen it. I saw it all right. Big, imposing, obviously dilapidated. Yes, I did not. I did notice it. It's quite hard to miss, but I assumed it was empty with it being in such a state of disrepair. We can only dream that it becomes vacant, unfortunately. Oh. August. We're not a fan of the Woodridge twins. Oh. August clenches their fists, the faintest flicker of magic simmering in their palm. Shimmering in their palm. They are a plague upon this town, sprouting their drivel and preaching to the dumb and ignorant. They're idiots. Okay. Augustus. Augustus. Or August takes a deep breath, their magic dissipating. Right. Sorry. Well, I'm not fond of them, if you, could already, if you couldn't already tell. Harry and I share a glance, and he smiles warmly, winking at me. Oh, I think we got the picture. <laughs> yeah, I got the picture. Now, Sarah, like I said, I suggest you start with them. Just see what you make of them. You might need to play along with the woman. She tends to favor playing games. Anything to baffle you. Well, this sounds fun. I love games. Have they already been questioned? Are they dangerous? Can I click, please? Thank you. Are they human? You're not allowed to click. I'm sorry. You can't play the game anymore. I must click. We're ending it here. Harry shrugs, and August's <laughs> annoyance at him being so unbothered is obvious. Yes, they're human, and yes, they've been questioned. Hunter Merriman saw to that, but she and the woman have a rather tumultuous <laughs> relationship. I like the idea of them like getting straight into a fist fight. Oh, I was thinking they were like exes. <laughs> they are not exes. I am going to pretend they are. Their alibi is solid. You're not going to want to, I promise. They have a guard, a human who has connections to Clan Casimir. She has no reason to support the Ibeck other than just doing her job. It'd still be interested. I'd still be interested to hear what you think of her, though. So, in theory, they're harmless, but they do have the people's ear for some bizarre reason. Okay, let's get to the action. They prey on fear, and the town is infected with the right to with, with that right now. Be cautious of them. They certainly won't take kindly to you. Yes, sir. Yes, that. Whoops, I hit something wrong. We're fine. Uh, they won't take kindly to you. Oh, I think Sarah can handle them just fine. Have some faith, August. Gotta have faith. August waves their hand dismissively, wandering over to a filing cabinet that's nestled in the far corner whilst murmuring, muttering something under their breath. Bye. A warm hand touches my arm, a reassuring gesture. I don't know you, bud. Stop touching me. We trust you, Sarah. Okay. Now, once you've spoken to them, I suggest just going wherever your gut tells you. I just you. don't like the idea, like, you know, this guy, like, three minutes, he's like, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna, I'm gonna touch put my hand on your you. arm. To me, he, like, thinks he's everybody's dad because he's like older that's what my brain is doing is that he's like i'm gonna be fatherly towards you and i'm like actually i have a dad i'm good back up yeah you're like I, you don't i don't know my you like fantasy that dad is like good like i don't need a surrogate fantasy dad i'm good i, I don't need another fantasy dad I, I've, I've got so like many we are full up dads. on fantasy dads. i am at capacity on fantasy dads i'm good harry like i'm good anyway once i've spoken to them i suggest whoever you got tells you yep there's plenty of other lunar. <laughs> I can't read. Lunarians. I was like, lunatics. There's plenty of other Larians for you to get to know, so just take today to really find your feet. I must meet with August and some of the other generals now, but please report back to us in the morning. Unless you find any damning evidence, of course, in which case report back immediately. I nod, glancing over at my superior, who has taken it upon themselves to dive headfirst into yet another pile of paperwork. Trust no one, right? Not a bloody soul. Yeah, I was just thinking about how Catboy told us not to trust anybody. Suspect everyone, question everything. I suspect you, and I question you. Okay, I am think we might need to end this episode here just because I'm very hungry. Okay. Well, <laughs> I close the door behind me, leaving August and Harry to their decision, and now I'm going to save the game and not come and go eat something. And then we will uh, I'll go eat. Okay. And then we will figure out if we're going to... Have a good time. What we're going to do next, but thank you for watching. <laughs> Um, that was one we... really long conversation. <laughs> it was so long. That's I swear long... it was like 30 minutes. I was minutes, getting I think. really bored towards the end. I was like, okay, yes, let's go meet It's not twins. helping that I'm making you read it all, but I will I will eventually join That's in okay. and I'm... read with you. I'm good. Like, I'm just, 
anyway, yes. Thank you for watching. Because and... I really want to have, like, an episode where we just try to do bad accents the whole time. Yeah. But yeah, thank you for watching. We will see Bye. you back here at some other point in time to continue. And I gotta comes. see that cat boy or I'm quitting this game. Okay, <laughs> anyway. Valid.